From the Denver Broncos Media Center, welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight, the NFL Combine in our rearview mirror. We have free agency right around the corner. But today on the program, we're going to talk about what we learned in regards to the Broncos out of the NFL Combine in Indianapolis this last week, uh, Benjamin Albright. Let's go ahead and uh, dive in here. Of course, we had a chance to catch up with GM George Payton. Um, really good conversation. I invite people to check it out at broncoscountrytonight.com. But one of the big things that we learned from that, of course, is that Draymond Jones, um, as according to George Payton, the general manager, will be testing. And this is very important as we're right around, I mean, we're less than 24 hours away from the franchise tag deadline. Yeah, um, and I, I think that that was kind of sort of apparent as they weren't, you know, or they weren't going to franchise tag him, and, and you know, they, they weren't able to kind of get where they need to be, and then you kind of see what the market is for free agency this year. You know, I think the Broncos would have liked to have had Draymond right around that $16 million a year number, and, you know, you look out there at uh, uh, at free agency, and initially we kind of thought the floor was going to be about 15 APY. The floor for Draymond's probably going to be closer to 20, um, just because there's not a great free agent class. There's more money to spend because of that. Uh, and so it looks like Draymond's just going to price himself out of staying at Denver Bronco. Yeah, so it's going to be kind of interesting to see that again. We're like about a week away from really the soft opening of free agency, which will tell us everything we need to know at that point about some of the directions the Broncos are going to go. Uh, one of the conversations we got into with George Payton is about offensive line. So it does feel as though the Broncos likely are going to be very heavy in on free agency as well as the NFL draft. Of course, the tough decision here is you have two third-round picks uh, you have five total draft picks this year, so uh, you're going to have to be very judicious in the way that you approach these things. Right. Um, I still think that the Broncos could potentially shop a few players to try to pick up some extra picks and multiply it a little bit, but uh, they know that they've got some holes to fill, and they know that they're going to have to figure that out. Uh, they do have currently $12 million available in cap space. That's before any potential uh, Graham Glasgow, Darby restructure, um, Garrett Bowl situation. They, there's there's ways for them to get to to a lot more money. Um, so they're 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 okay, and they don't have to spend a lot on the rookie cap this year because they don't have those early draft picks. So, um, you know, there's there's money there to to fill things, but the margins are a little thin. Can't afford to miss on any of the free agents that they sign. Yeah, it seems pretty narrow right now, and especially. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's a it's a sinking ship or anything like that, but there's definitely some holes in this uh, in the hole, if you, if you will, and. Again, the the biggest one right now is on the offensive line. But again, then you go to a Draymond Jones. If for some reason you're not able to bring him back, all of a sudden the defensive line needs to be addressed. Now, of course, they did have two defensive linemen that they brought in in the draft last year. Maybe you can develop them a little bit. You can add some veteran somebody there, and, and you can sort of patchwork that thing together for a season. But uh, you see what happens in today's NFL where when you have – any weakness, really, uh, perceived weakness or otherwise, on the defensive side of the ball, guess what? The elite teams, they just exploit that and exploit that. If you can't stop the run, Patrick Mahomes, he's cool throwing it 15 times in a game because guess what? They're going to run for 280 on you. Yeah, and and I think that's the thing. You look at the, the three down linemen, uh, the defensive line, that's going to be an issue. Deshaun Williams, do you bring him back? He's kind of just a guy. You're letting Draymond walk. Uh, Purcell has not exactly been healthy for a full season. You have no depth behind him. DJ Jones looks like he's uh, he's a stud, but even running a, a line that's Deshaun, uh, DJ, and, and Mike Purcell out there, uh, you still got to have depth on that. And, and Matt Henningsen is only one body. So um, you're going to have to find somebody who's uh, who's got the, let's call it heft, uh, to play there at the zero or the one technique, and they don't really have that. So um, you know, there, there are going to be, there's going to have to be some capital expended in that area. No doubt about that. So we come away from the NFL combine and I mean, there's some there's conversation about free agency stuff. A lot of focus in on uh, what's going to happen at the top of the draft, Anthony Richardson and his impressive performance out there. But what were some things that you took away from it? Um, you know, I thought that, uh, it's a deep running back class. It's a deep tight end class, deep corner class. So those are some good things. Unfortunately, the Broncos really don't need much of that. Maybe a running back, but they really don't need much, much in, in the way of those positions. Um, so it'll be interesting. You'll be hoping that a lot of those go early. You'll be hoping that in a deep class teams try to snap up those bodies early and push some of these other players down to the Broncos in the, you know, in the third round. Uh, there's not really a lot of defensive tackles in this draft, something the Broncos probably need. Um, looking at the offensive line, it's it's kind of hit or miss. A guy that everybody thought was going to be a tackle on Skaronsky is probably going to go to guard, um, although they could work out for the Broncos because it looks like they're going to have a hole at left guard letting Dalton Reisner hit the mark. Yeah, but Skaronsky so, might be a top 10 pick. I mean, Well, that's the thing. It's, but I'm just saying that, you know, in, in looking at this, is the more those those picks go early, the more that pushes 
you know, pushes people down and you can kind of hope for that. Um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, looking at some of these receivers, I do think the Broncos will be interested in one or two of them. I think there's a running back, one or two of them they could be could be potentially interested in. There's a kid out of Louisville, didn't play much because he was hurt, uh, but looked looked like somebody that, that fits kind of the Sean Payton measurables. So uh, we'll kind of see if we'll kind of see if that's the case. Um, you know, overall, I thought uh, I thought the combine went well. I thought uh, it was fun to watch some of these guys test out of their minds. You know, the Anthony Richardson stuff was was fun to watch. Um, you know, as far as that kind of stuff goes, and the corners all all uh, put in the times that they put out there. I think there's a lot of deep threat receivers, long stride receivers in this class. That that could be something. But um, you know, again, the Broncos with a dearth of picks. You're sitting there on a you know on the bench, hoping, waiting, and and waiting to see what drops to you. I do wonder, and, and again, if they do make some trades and are able to put themselves in position to add more draft capital, this conversation takes on new meaning. But with those two third round picks, you've seen George Payton. Well, he likes to t- generally trade back and uh, acquire more picks, split those. But we've also seen Sean Payton, at least in his history with Mickey Loomis and the Saints, they like to trade up and they mm-hmm. like to be aggressive. You know, one of the players that I'd be aggressive for if they were sort of sliding into the middle of the second round is Darnell Wright, the right tackle out of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, tested off out, out of his mind there at the Combine. Um, and, and he is a right tackle. He can't, he's played a little left, but he's not, not great at it. He's really a right tackle. And so for the Broncos, I feel like if, if you're in position where a couple of these guys, and it's always the case, right? Get out of the first round, and we're always sitting there on day two going, like, I still can't believe this guy is sitting here. They can potentially get in position to take some of these guys, especially if there's somebody they love. Yeah, I think the other part of that, though, is, is if you're the Denver Broncos and you know you need a right tackle, uh, can you afford to ignore that in free agency and hope that that guy's going to be there good in point. the draft? That's that's a tough that's a ask. Very good and point. So, uh, I don't know that that would necessarily be the strategy. I think you've got to address the areas that you need to address and then hope that some of these other things are there you know, later on. So I feel like this draft is really going to be a depth da- draft for the Broncos. I don't know that you're going to get – I mean, I know we we know the third round is the, the money round for George Payton, but I don't know that we're we're eyeballing anything here that's that looks like it's going to be some kind of starter unless, you know, who knows, somebody drops and falls down. You know, you never know. People fall all the time. Uh, uh, you know, if somebody falls into their lap in the third round, then maybe they get a, a starter out of it. Oh, but you said it perfectly. I mean, the third round so far for George Payton, you're talking about uh, getting Quinn Miners, who is a starter, mm-hmm. right? Um, Baron Browning. Baron Browning, who is ostensibly going to be a starter and next Greg year. Dulcich is a and then Greg Dulcich, who is a starting tight end for you. So, yeah, it's, it's been a very good round. And far be it for me to tell George Payton to not draft more players in the third round. I love that he has two third round picks. But I also simultaneously know if you do enter the draft with specific needs mm-hmm. rather than being able to draft for depth, then you, you, you might have to put yourself in a position to be more aggressive. And then, and, and again, Sean Payton, in the time they were with the New Orleans Saints, that's one of the things they did. Hey, we need a pass rusher. We're going to go ahead and trade up and go get a starting pass rusher because we we feel like we have to have one coming out of this draft. It, it, nobody wants to be in that position, but it's just part of the part of the deal is you can't fix everything, especially mm-hmm. in free agency, and especially when, at least right now, you only have $12 million in cap space ostensibly. Right. Yeah. It's, like I said, we and like we have said, the margins for the Broncos this season in terms of filling all these holes is going to be thin. There's going to be a glaring something somewhere. So you've got to kind of try to do the best you can and hope that you mitigate that and, uh, and, and can successfully navigate that as you head into next year where you got a full complement of draft picks. The salary cap situation is a lot better, and, uh, and you go from there. All right. For Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country Tonight. Yeah.